Hey, this is Will Ferrara, and you're tuned in to the Interactive Wrestling Radio. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio. On the Newsmaker line with me right now is a Ring of Honor superstar who is a veteran, and that makes me feel really, really old. It is Will Ferreira. Mr. Ferreira, are you with me? Ah, yes. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure to have you on. I say that I feel really, really old because you are legitimately a veteran and you're 10 years younger than me. So <laughs> that makes me feel just ancient. <laughs> uh, don't feel like a veteran, I'll tell you that. Still got a lot oh. left to learn, but, you know, time flies. It's crazy to think that it's been 10 years already. Looking forward. Hopefully I got a few more decades in me. I, I definitely think that's the case. And we just saw you recently on Ring of Honor TV. You just turned your back on your, your tag partner, Cheeseburger. Uh, I guess what's my what's your thoughts on uh, on on ditching your partner there? Oh, I've been having a lot more fun beating him up than uh, when he's been teaming with me. I tell you that. You know, <laughs> Cheeseburger was great. Uh, it was fun teaming with him, but you know, I feel like the next step is with just me. So, Cheeseburger's in my crosshairs, and oh man, I'll kick his butt every show. It's good. It's fun. It's fun on my end. <laughs> Very good, very good. So you've been with Ring of Honor for a few years now. Uh, it looks like it was back 2014, I think, is when you came in the first time, maybe 13. Um, so what is your take on how the company has changed over time, and where do you see them going? Well, I think it's undisputed now that Ring of Honor is the number two company in this country, you know, uh, quite possibly globally, our relationship with New Japan. And it's really cool to be a part of it, you know, like uh, – it took a while to kind of for me to find my stride and to find my confidence as a part of Ring of Honor because looking at everyone that the the roster is made up of, it's like oh wow, I need a I need to hang with all these guys, these international superstars, you know, uh, and I still feel like I'm catching up because everyone keeps getting better month to month, show by show. The product keeps getting better as a whole, so it's cool to have to be around that because then it forces you to get better, just to to hang, to stay afloat, you know. So I'm really excited to be a part of Ring of Honor. Hasn't feel like three years passed already, but you know it has, and I'm con- I'm looking forward to stay with Ring of Honor. That's definitely in my immediate future, my goals. I want to keep rising up, you know. Very good, very good. And uh, you, like I said, you're a veteran. You were trained many, many years ago, ten years ago, eleven years ago. Now, uh, you're trained by a guy that that's just incredible. You know, Johnny Rods and Taz, uh, two guys that are just incredible, incredible guys. Uh, question for you is, what was it like training with them, and how much did they influence you now as an assistant trainer at the ROH Dojo? Oh, well, it was really cool training with them. You know, like Johnny really allowed me to start at a young age, uh, under 18, and, you know, I'm grateful for that because uh, I was really young when I started, so I didn't treat it much like a career. You know, I was just kind of like, oh, wow, this is wrestling, this is cool, but it still taught me a solid foundation that has everything's been based off since, you know. And when I did the Taz Dojo a few years later, I was coming of age and it really kind of put things into perspective. Like, hey, if you want this to be a career, you got to treat it like such. And he kind of I gave guests, uh, gave me the polish I needed to start treating this like a professional. And then you can't leave out Delirious, who I've been training under the last few years on the ROH Dojo, which pretty much is his curriculum that Cheeseburger and I continue to teach as assistant trainers at the dojo. So, like, you know, the three of them, I, I owe them pretty much everything. Uh, going forward in my career because they've helped me out so much and I'm just grateful for the opportunity to pass it forward now to our new generation of students that are able to join the dojo and keep learning under this tree. That's incredible. That's incredible. And the last ROH guy we had on was Punishment Martinez. Definitely a different in-ring style than yourself, but something I've noticed about the ROH roster, I've had on Kelly Klein, um, we've had on Frankie Kazarian, we've had on, as I just mentioned, Punishment Martinez. You guys seem to have the most intelligent, well-rounded, grounded talent roster. You guys don't seem to have your heads in the clouds. You guys all seem to really know what you're talking about. Half you guys are trainers, it seems like. It, you guys really <laughs> seem to know what you're doing. Yeah, you know, I feel like it's Ring of Honor's become, like, you find the cream of the crop, you know, like all those camps. Uh people come around all over the world to be a part of Ring of Honor. And then once you're a part of that system, you're learning from people from all around the world, you know? So it's cool because the door keeps revolving. New talent keeps coming in, new people you could learn from. When we go travel to all these different places, you got 
the local talent that comes to that show. So it's great. You network, you meet, and you discuss with all uh, a bunch of your peers, you know, a bunch of legends you, you cross paths with. So it's a never-ending learning experience. You know, we all kind of help each other out. You know, no one, as far as the Ring of Honor roster, has ever declined if they wanted, if I asked them to watch my match and give me some feedback. So, you know, it's a really cool environment. I'm just glad everyone that isn't part of that, uh, everyone that is a part of that environment keeps it that way and, you know, pays it forward for everyone. Incredible. Yes, absolutely. And I, I'm a big Ring of Honor fan. I mean, I, I especially over the past couple of years, uh, you know, it, it just seems to have really found its stride product-wise, and, and I think you guys have got something really great here. Um, I guess my question is, what do you think, as a talent, needs to happen for you guys to reach that next plateau, that next echelon here with uh, with the casual fan, maybe not the hardcore wrestling fan who seeks out wrestling, but the casual fan who only knows WWE? Um, well, I think the, the biggest thing we need to do is just to get their eyes on our product. You know, like uh, everyone that's a part of Ring of Honor, and I feel this way, I feel like Ring of Honor has the best wrestling on the planet. And it's just a matter of them discovering us, you know, like I remember when I was growing up, once like you were in that WWE bubble as a casual fan, it's kind of hard to branch out because they're oversaturated with content. But I feel like if they were to just see what we have to offer and they could compare and make the choice for themselves, you know, the casual fan, we just need to be on TV, a national platform, you know, be a, we are on a national platform, but more, you know, I want more eyes to be on the product. I think we got it. I think the production is great. I think the athletes are great. I think the talent's there. The eyes just need to be there to see it. Absolutely, absolutely. And in your time at Ring of Honor, you've may, uh, worked with some incredible talent who have gone on to other places as well, like uh, Donovan Dijak and, and a lot of other play, pe folks who you've wrestled. Um, I guess my question would be, is ROH, do you guys feel that ROH is the place to be or is it kind of a stepping stone? And I don't mean that to be sarcastic, but you think of guys like CM Punk and Samoa Joe, all who cut their teeth, even to some extent, um, Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, all cut their teeth in ROH and went on to WWE. See, the way you're speaking, it sounds more like you guys see the ROH as the, this is where you want to be. Yeah, and I think it goes by case by case on the individual, you know, like if an individual has a certain goal, I say that they should do everything that in their power to achieve that goal. And uh, Ring of Honor, to me, uh, there's it's clear cut, you know, if you're a part of this, if you succeed in Ring of Honor, it's pure talent, it's wrestling. So I look at it as if I could succeed here, but there's the best wrestling on the planet, I'll be able to use that skill set and succeed anywhere. I'm not yeah. saying I'm... Uh, this is a stepping stone for me because this, for me, there's a lot left I want to do here. You know, I look at like the greats like uh, Roderick Strong has been here for a decade, more than a decade before he moved on. He they had a legacy, you know. Yeah, I want to leave my and name in the Ring of Honor legacy like that. Oh, yeah, a bunch of times. He whooped my ass and uh, <laughs> it was fun. But <laughs> <laughs> He whooped my ass and it was fun. You know? <laughs> Only on a yeah. wrestling show. You know, and like if you look at it, like a Cody, for a perfect example, he's been in that WWE system, but now – He's world champion here in Ring of Honor, and I feel like he's at the best of his game. You know, so it depends Absolutely. on the individual, I think, for where is best for them. And, you know, right now I feel like Ring of Honor is the best place for me, and awesome. I'm looking to prove myself against the, the best in the world. Cool. Cody recently made a comment that I thought was interesting. Funny that you mentioned his name. He said that he's worked in both places, and he honestly sees more growth potential in ROH than GFW or Impact or whatever you want to call it. Do you, would you agree with that? I know you've not worked ROA. Uh, sorry, I know you've not worked Impact, but what is your take on that kind of comment? Well, I, I can't really say anything about GFW. I have zero experience from the inside work in there. But I know from Ring of Honor, we've been growing at a steady pace for the last few years, and or even before that. And it's I think that uh, steady growth is better than spurting here and there and declining. And you know, I think that we have nothing but room to grow. You know, we're, we've been maintaining and growing steadily. So we just got to keep that up. And I think we have all the tools, all the, all the stars lined up to make sure we keep doing that. Yeah, you mentioned production. You mentioned the steady growth of the company over the years. I mean, when you watched the anniversary pay-per-view and you saw the clips of, you know, Christopher Daniels coming to the ring from the very first show and you saw how that was filmed versus the high quality production that you guys have today. I mean, the, the, the evolution is clear and man, I can't wait to see what you guys are able to do as the years and, and months progress here. Um, 
you guys are heading overseas. And once again, it's your second War of the Worlds, and uh, you guys are really just expanding globally. How important is it in the modern wrestling era for a brand to be, not to quote another brand, but to be a global brand? Well, I think it's very important because now, like, the wrestling fan base, they could, like, access no matter where they are in the world, you know? Like, New Japan World, we're watching over here from the States. You got the British wrestling scene that everyone wants to keep an ear on. You know, now in this Internet day where everything's accessible, you know, I think it's kind of important to keep a strong presence everywhere you can. And Ring of Honor is a global company, you know. They're, they're making stops in London, Liverpool, and Edinburgh all in three days. So it's pretty cool, you know, and that they're, they're partnering up with CMLL guys, New Japan guys, RevPro guys. So the really uh, crowded talent pool for those, uh, those shows should be a, a great time for everyone who checks it out. Yeah, and again, it speaks to the growth of the company. You know, they did do international shows back in the mid two thousands, but they were paired with other companies. Now it's just you guys. You guys are are the driving force. You're the ones people are showing up for. So that's that's incredible. Hey, as a guy who we talked, like I mentioned, about having Punishment Martinez on, and we talked about being a large guy. As a guy who's more of that two hundred five live, more of that X division style worker, more of the cruiserweight style worker. Um, I guess my question would be, how has wrestling accepted you as a non 300 pound six foot eighter uh, versus somebody like that? How has that been for you? And, and how has the approach been? Uh, has it been more challenging for you as a not a huge guy? Um, I, I believe in the, the first few years, first couple of years, it definitely was more of a challenge because I didn't necessarily work towards my size. You know, I felt like oh, I could I could just work like a big guy, but perception is reality you know so i had to realize that uh it's a it's not necessarily harder for me but i just need to be uh look at myself in a different way and project that a different way that i added more struggle more drama more emotion and i actually prefer being an underdog now because i love tapping into that stuff and you know like uh i don't think that anyone has limits whether it's size it's height it's weight you know it's a matter of whether you can um, suspend someone's disbelief and have them emotionally invest into you, you know? So that's all it takes. Like, I don't think anyone who's short, there's some guys out there that are shorter than me. A lot of guys are out there that's bigger than me, but I don't ever would use height as a disadvantage. You know, you just got to learn how to play through to who you are and let everyone, let everyone, let everyone be able to see it. Very cool. You worked a lot of different ta talent. We mentioned Roderick Strong. We mentioned Donovan. We mentioned a lot of different guys that you've worked. Um, one of the guys you worked was Kushida. And I guess my question would be is, how is it different to work with somebody who might have a little bit more of a language barrier um, when you work in the ring? And is that something that internationally is a problem, or is that something that you guys are able to work through? Um, with the New Japan guys, uh, I think it's something we're able to work through, you know, like wrestling speaks through all languages when you use the emotion and the drama of wrestling. So I think as long as, you know, you speak in the same wrestling language, it's, it's going to be fine, you know. Uh, yeah, I didn't feel any... Uh, it's Sure, you can't uh, get as complicated as far as the verbiage you use uh, for things like that, but, you know, I think that they're the best wrestlers in the world, too. You know, the, the New Japan that we share, the talent pool. Rashida was probably one of my toughest opponents, you know, and uh, not because of the language barrier, just straight up skill versus skill, you know. He's, he's one of the best. Absolutely, and that was an incredible match, by the way. I want to give you praise. I watched that on YouTube uh, just before we started this. In fact, just before we did our last interview. So that was an incredible match, man. I want to give you credit for that. Uh, thank you, man. I, I was a few years back. You know, I'm hoping I get a shot at him again soon. All right. So I'm holding my microphone here, and I have to ask this question. I hate asking questions like this, but I have to. I got the pipe bomb going through my mind, and the ROH owner recently said that there's an open door to CM Punk down the road to ever returning, to, if he ever returns to wrestling, that he'd love to have him be in Ring of Honor. What does an ROH talent like yourself think of the idea of CM Punk appearing in an in, in ROH ring again? Um, I think that'd be great. You know, uh, I've never got to experience him from a locker room perspective, sharing a locker room with him, and he was one of the biggest stars in the world a few years back. I know he's been out of the game, but... I think that both parties could benefit if he decides to do that. You know, I think that would be cool. So from my perspective, I'm all game if uh, that's what they decide to do. All right, man. Well, I can't wait to see what happens on TV between yourself and Cheeseburger. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, before I let you go, do you mind if I ask you one last favor? 
No, not at all. Would you mind if I ask you for a liner just saying this is Will Ferreira sure and you're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio? Sure thing. I paused there because I said uh, she made fun of me for it with uh, with Kelly Klein. I said, this is so-and-so, and she she did one of those when she said, this is so-and-so. So I... This is so-and-so. <laughs> <laughs> she, like it's I Interactive said, inter- Wrestling Radio, right? That's the name of our show, yes, I sir. want to make sure I say, say it right. <laughs> All right, and I'll count you down. I appreciate it, by the way, and I'll count you down in five, oh, no worries, man. four, Thanks. three, two. Hey, this is Will Ferrara, and you're tuned in to the Interactive Wrestling Radio. Enjoying what you're hearing? Be sure and check out WrestlingEpicenter.com on social media at Facebook.com slash Wrestling Epicenter. On Twitter at James Epicenter. And, of course... WrestlingEpicenter.com for 24-hour news updates, our interview archives, and all the other information you've come to expect from the Wrestling Epicenter. This is the pretty badass Kelly Klein, and you are listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio.